Hello, my name is Eddie Topic. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil. Paris Rapeseed. Now, 17 weeks ago, I detailed some key bearish pressures that the market had back then started dealing with. The reason I repeat them now is because the levels have once again become significant. They were, and I quote, we have overhead a more diaphanous congestion band between 456 and three quarters and 468 and three quarters. A band that was relatively easy to navigate than the others mentioned, but which is now has three key potential bearish pressures within it. They are declining short medium moving average, currently 424 and a half. Then the medium moving average, currently 432 and a half, and the declining long moving average, currently 447 even. At least two out of these three are descending to impact the market. And one should not take anything away from them, especially any efforts to pressure the market from above. End of quote. Now, moving back to today, the short medium moving average highlighted in green on my daily chart had recently been a reinforcement to the upper time, currently 420 and a quarter, of the small end of November 2023 to mid January 2024 bearish shift pitchfork. Now, I've highlighted this pitchfork in dark blue. Now, <clears throat> I said the following two weeks ago about this bearish pitchfork, and I quote, however, the next week and a half, a week and a bit should be interesting, as the middle time crosses down through the first of the rising alternate necklines, and I suspect we may see something give way at that point. I also note how the short medium moving average is religiously tracking along the upper time of this same bearish shift pitchfork, providing additional reinforcement if it was needed and the declining medium moving average is not that far away either, end of quote. So, as you can see on my daily chart, there was a cusp forming in the market between the two necklines below, highlighted in green and red, and especially with the middle tine in dark blue of the bearish pitchfork during March. And it's this cusp which I believe initiated the move higher, which we have seen the result of in March. This week, prices have shot upwards through the green short medium moving average, the mauve medium moving average, and up into the overhead key congestion mentioned in earlier commentaries. We've seen 438 and three, uh, 438 even <coughs> to 445 and three quarters. Now, looking below once more for possibly the last time, I said some 19 weeks going to quote for the head and shoulders top pattern. This is the June to September 2023 head and shoulders top pattern. For the head and shoulders, shoulders top pattern, and so primary target X would be in the 400 even zone, with a secondary harder to reach target X1 down in the 354 even zone. Any move lower towards these would be very, very interesting as we have alternate neckline one, currently at 402 and three quarters, and alternate neckline two, currently 406 and three quarters, both in the way and both originating back from the old November 2019 to February 2020 to head and shoulders top. They are highlighted in bright red and green, respectively. Thus, and that's the end of the quote, thus, even 19 weeks ago, I was concerned by the potential of these two necklines, the red and the green might have, or what they may do to the market. As a consequence, I've retired any targets below. Now, I also added the following last week, and I quote, we've seen a turn towards a bullish with a move up and test of not only the upper time, but the green short medium moving average that's supposedly reinforcing it. This is not a major turn, not yet, but it's not far away from being one. If we do turn higher properly, and the first key level is not that far away, at the February high, uh, 427 even, where well, we could see significant uh, fur recovery higher and proof yet again that the two alternate necklines still have what it takes to turn prices higher. 
The reason I say 427 is that any move over that level will set up the opportunity for a possible double bottom over mid-January today, period, end of quote. Sorry, no, still quoting. So watch what happens up at the green short medium moving average, the 427 level, and the medium moving average overhead. And that's the end of the quote. <clears throat> well, we have had a double bottom, as well as a break higher from the bearish shift pitchfork that acted as a bear channel. And so it is time I laid out some potentials for the move higher. Thus, a secondary hard reach target for the recent double bottom pattern would be in the 446 and a half area. The primary target's already been achieved. For the break above the bearish shift pitchfork, the secondary harder to achieve target X1 is in the 446 and three quarter area. So there's only a quarter of a, a, a difference between them. Both of these are very close to each other and also close to the next significant congestion overhead, the gold highlighted flatlining long moving average, currently 447 even. All these potential pattern targets and resistances sit within a larger, more recent November to mid-December 2023 congestion band that stretches from the June 2013 high at 38 even up to the 50% Fibonacci line of the May to July 2023 move up at 456 and a half. But one should note the action lower this year has potentially more ammunition enough to take on a substantial but smaller, in effect what it is, a smaller overhead resistance area should it choose to do so. Winnipeg Canola. What I consider, or let me rephrase this, what I had in the past considered to be the most important recent pattern here was the late August to mid-November 2023 bearish shift pitchfork highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. You could also throw in here some past patterns such as the short medium moving average, currently 6.13.5, which is highlighted in green on my daily chart, as well as a combination of the October to November reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern that was also an ascending triangle. This was not the best looking version of such a pattern, but it nevertheless still worked at the time. Okay, so uh, 12 weeks ago, I said the following and I quote, my concern with this move lower was that this could be seen as a precursor for a move down in the other oil seeds and veg oils. My thinking was that such a move could be seen as the market seemingly choosing to try and form a bearish halfway hesitation over November with potential all the way down to even the 580s even zone. This is not a done deal and I have not placed any targets below, but it is worth considering in the coming days and weeks. And that's the end of that quote. The target for this bearish pattern, well, that was reached four weeks ago. Moving back now to the dark blue bearish shift pitchfork. This had been excellent at showing the bearish angle of sack of this market since its inception in November last year. Really, until last week really until last week. Specifically, it has in the past been the upper time, currently 581.80, acting as a dynamic downtrend and upper bear channel line, and the middle time, currently at 544.30, acting as a lower bear channel line, that had been superb at showing the way lower. So what had we in the way lower that slowed, halted, and eventually turned prices higher? Well, looking at it, not much. It seems the approach to the December 2020 low at 567 even <clears throat> was the thing that finally turned prices higher, or more specifically, the approach of the middle time support towards the, this other support. Last week, the market, market broke up through the upper time. So what did we have in a way on top side? Well, there was the May 2023 low at 611.10, which had been good enough to support the market in January, and then the 2021 low at 629.60, 60. 60. I'd also suggest the previously mentioned descending short medium moving average in green, six th currently 613 and a half. And beyond that, perhaps the, pan the paralleling medium moving average, currently at 647.30, 30. Of those four, two resistances have been converted into supports, leaving just the 2021 low and the mauve colored medium moving average. And to be honest, the 2021 low of 629.60 has managed to cap the market so far this week. So it's time to look at further overhead resistances and the next ones are the June 2021 low of 655.90 and the neckline of the April to June reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern currently at 665.70, 70. I am unsure about how effective these will be. It is also time to set out some potential topside targets for the break of such a large bearish pitchfork. 
And for a beer channeling pattern, well, we've already reached that in the 630 area, but for a big bearish pitchfork, suggests as we've seen, I would suggest the primary target X would be in the 70440 area, with a secondary harder to reach target X1 up in the 73090 area. It'll be interesting to see if the market will choose such an idea. Finally, I would only once again add the following to as a postscript to what I've already said. It is something I said 11 weeks ago. And I quote, I would add this final thought. I am increasingly becoming interested in knowing if this contract is really an indicator, a lead review of what the other oil seeds and veg oils may have to deal with. End of quote. To this I added two weeks ago, and I quote, this also means on any recovery and move back up and not only the way down on the way down. End of quote. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. If you listen to any of my commentaries on palm oil, you would have heard me repeat so, so many times that the mid-August, early November 2022, that's right, August to November 2022, mildly bearish shift pitchfork, the one highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart, was running the show here. In January this year, the market rose up to test the upper time, and then again in February and now March. Mid-January, mid-February, saw the upper time bridge, but then only with a single close over on each location, oh, occasion. Not so two weeks ago, when we had multiple closes over the upper time, and then last week, the original move higher exploited the breach, turning into a proper break higher, and the end of this venerable bearish shift pitchfork. I'll retire it after this commentary. So going back a few steps first, the significant patterns and levels at one time or other within this bearish pitchfork had been the June to September 2023 diamond pattern, the late May 2023 today uptrend, currently a 370.80, the interesting 61.8% Fibonacci line at 35.92, of the late May to late July 2023 move, the purple neckline, that is, of the September to November 2023 reverse head and shoulders pattern, currently at 40.03. And the February 2011 high at 39.53. Now, at one time or other, these have all acted as support or resistance, or now re resistance uh, on their own, and that have become supports, which in turn have helped drive prices higher, rising through the previously mentioned upper time in dark blue, and thus making a strategic change in the overall longer term bearish perception of this market. I did say so six weeks ago here, and I quote, overall, I would suggest watching what the market does at either the blue upper tine or the red uptrend and the lesser Fibonacci line at 35.92 to gauge any clues as to what may be next. I suspect with the uptrend and the upper tine converging, it may not uh, be that long, end of quote. Indeed, we didn't have to wait that long as we've punched up through the upper tine and the purple neckline and through the resistance of the July 2023 high at 41.89, the interesting 38.2% Fibonacci lines of the July 2019 to March 22 move and the May 20 to March 22 move at 42.39 and 42.74 respectively, as well as the neckline currently at 42.11 of the September 2015 to November 2017 head and shoulders top. Indeed, we've punched up so high that we're in a fairly three area all the way up to the November 2022 high at 44.08 and the August 22 high at 44.84. In anticipation of such a move higher, I put forward the following idea last week and I quote, there could be an argument put forward that the action as far back as even September last year is a possible if broken and repaired bull channel with a breached and repaired uptrend as the lower bull channel line and a now broken purple uh, neckline as the upper bull channel line. I can see the attraction of such an idea, but I didn't go back, go with it five weeks back uh, ago, and I still don't really go with it now. However, I can see the attraction of such a pattern. And so I've placed that target X at 4240 as a potential target for such a pattern to reach this potential. The market would have to not only overcome the July 2023 high, but also the neckline, the old but large, September 2015 to November 2017 head and shoulders top, as well as the congestion at 42.39. 
Looking at the market and its actions, this seems doable given the bearish, well, given the 42.39 level. Now, looking at this market and its actions, these all seem doable, especially given the ammunition that's been accumulated below since August of last year. And that's the end of the quote, hell of a long quote. Doable it was, very much so. And you can see on my daily chart, so what now? Well, for this, I went back to my standby on such occasions, the longer term monthly charts. And there was one clear standout level that needed to be watched. And that was a November 2022 high at 44.08. This is a key, key level on the top side, because if it's broken and properly broken, then there are very significant potentials top side. Similarly, if it holds in that area, then there are significant potentials on the downside. So watch to see if prices reach up to 44.08 and then what prices do at that level. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and at the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.